Okay, my dude, we're recording. Today, I wanna talk about how I built my website because it's more than just a personal website. It's really like a platform where I can deploy all my apps over the next year. When we take a look here and we go to my website, you see it's like this, we got this front end here, you scroll down, we got all this stuff. What none of you can actually see is that we have a bunch going on in the back end. So there's actually a dashboard. But as you can see, we got a 401. It's because we're not authenticated. My website actually has a login route. It's not linked anywhere. Okay. Wow, failed to log in. Did I change the password? Oh no, I think I typed it in wrong. Okay, that should be the correct password. Logged in as Hangfire. So now, API slash Hangfire, right? Oh my God, there's a dashboard. This Hangfire server can process background jobs. Right now there's two jobs. This one, statistics, goes every minute and the, the GitHub one goes once an hour. Here's my Kubernetes cluster. We created it 15 days ago. You can see we have three nodes here. So these are physical machine. Well, they're not physical, but they're, they, work, they're act like, they act like physical machines. Let's look at deployment. So we've got multiple deployments. All of these have one, container running, but the front end has three. Get service. You can see each one of these is also a service. You code up all of these programs and you want to be able to easily scale them up. So how do we do that? I like to focus on backend automation, writing algorithms. So what do we need to make this platform? This is what I was asking myself a few months ago. Some of this stuff is really basic. We need a database. We need background processing, which is just updating our database periodically. Secure APIs. That's like how you saw that I've secured Hangfire. We want the front end to be separate from the back end and we want to separate all these things. That way they can be developed by themselves. Microservices, ah, okay, this is the architecture, this is the term used to describe the architecture for what I'm trying to do. This is kind of, this, I had to sit down a few months ago and come up with the microservices for our design. So that ended up being an authentication server that uses JSON web tokens. I coded this one up uh, a month ago when I was on vacation <laughs> in Jamaica, I can't just sit and um, you know be a vegetable on the beach. So I coded up this authentication server. But then here's our front end. Our front end uses the authentication server with a login route and our front end can also access the Hangfire background processing server um, through the dashboard but the only way you can get there is by logging in. So this is how everything's connected. An image can be used to build containers. We need to create an image out of each microservice. That way we can create as many containers as we need. The only thing that we have to change in our code is we need to create a Docker file. So this will actually create an image out of our source code, okay? Hangfire, oh look, we have a Docker file as well. It's the exact same thing. Once the source code is in an image, then you can create containers out of it. Once you can create containers out of it, then you need to orchestrate it with either Docker Swarm or Kubernetes. This is how you translate your programming knowledge into Kubernetes knowledge. Each microservice is a deployment. And then I can say, create three replicas and that creates three pods. So a pod is like a container, but it can contain multiple containers. If you want your deployment to be able to talk to other things, then you create a service. Here's a, here's a deployment and here's the name of the image. But if we want to scale it up, we can actually just change this number. That's how easy it is. It's the next day. I just want to show you a real life example of how easy it is to deploy uh, some new code. So we need to first build the image. Okay. When I do this, it's going to start building, but we want to upload. So what do we do? We're going to push the 1.1 version of our front end. Now we've just modified our file from instead of saying 1.0, we want to pull 1.1. So you can see we have all these other things running. 
none of those are affected. So the only thing that gets affected is the front end, which is awesome. So I know it's not going to break any of these things. It's completely separate. It's completely separate. So now let's apply the file again. And it's going to do the same thing where it's like only one of them is up to date right now. It's going to create more containers. It's going to kill off the old ones. And it does all of this without you ha without you even noticing, you know, we're live here. So it was really that easy. I don't usually write things for my videos, but I wrote up something because this is such a massive topic. So I'm gonna be reading my screen is basically what I'm saying. So my website was not always like this. It started out as a simple front end page with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then I wanted to expand into backend web programming. So I started with Node.js. I tried writing up some applications on the backend, such as a YouTube descriptions updater. And I made a video about that, but it all started to feel messy when the front end and back end was on the same server. This is when I got started thinking about microservices and I started making videos talking about how I want to design my server architecture. Uh, many of you recommended that I use Docker and Kubernetes for scale, which I had never done before. I started putting my code into Docker images, um, and then I played around with Docker Compose and container to container networking. Once I felt confident with Docker Compose, I started learning Kubernetes and I tried converting my existing Docker Compose files into Kubernetes files. So I had to learn about pods, services, deployments, and the difference between Docker networks and Kubernetes networks. So it was very, very valuable. Um, turns out every service networks on a private IP by default, and to expose the service to the outside world, you have to do some extra work. The best solution appeared to be the Ingress controller as they have one based on Nginx. So I converted my Nginx knowledge into the Nginx ingress controller and successfully sent requests to the appropriate servers. Then everything started making sense, <laughs> surprisingly. Uh, yeah, so then everything started making sense and I deployed my back end to production. Uh, it didn't take much time after that to write up a front end and connect it to my back end code base. The front end is pretty scalable. .NET, Node.js, Hangfire authentication, all good. But for now, I have a single instance of a database. If I, if I want more than one instance of a database, the data is gonna need to be replicated between the two. So here's the thing, right? The database is not scalable. It's not. The file servers, oh, file servers don't even exist. Okay, so clearly we've solved these problems, but we haven't solved these problems. What I'm trying to say is that it never ends. I don't know guys, what do you think? Do you like these, do you like these videos where I sit down and blow up my mind? Do 